northern boroughs have been shaped by many influences in the past and various shaping processes continue to this day. There is more to the boroughs than a first glance may suggest. The famous Pebble Ridge provides the boroughs with a protective wall. The ridge faces northwest to the incessant surges of the Atlantic. The Pebble Ridge finally turns west and ends in the estuary, where the Tor and Torridge rivers join to meet the sea. A great bite in the estuary is occupied by the Skern mudflats. The Skern is of vital importance as a wintering ground for migrant birds. In front of the Skern are the deep waters of Appledore Pool. The lifeboat is moored here. And Appledore itself is a fishing village at the mouth of the Torridge. Insto faces Appledore across the river. At the southern end of the burrows is Westwood Ho, the seaside resort. And between Westwood Ho in the south and Appledore in the north, the landward border of the burrows lies at the foot of the ancient hill settlement of Northam. Hundreds of years ago, the burrows was a place for farming rabbits. That's how it got its name. Few people manage to spot them these days, but there are still some living there. The burrows is common land, and residents of the Manor of Northam have traditional rights to graze their sheep and horses here. The grazing animals wander over the whole area, but the site has several types of terrain. The least attractive is probably the area immediately behind the Pebble Ridge, but this provides important overspill parking for recreation on the burrows or on the beach. There is an area of rough pasture at the Westwood Ho end, but in winter it is so waterlogged that birds prefer it to dog walkers. Beyond that, the central section of the burrows is dominated by the golf course. At the end of the central road next to the sea is Sandymere, a seasonal lake. At Sandymere is the visitors centre, recently enhanced and expanded and with an adjacent cafe and there is easy access to the beach close by. A fence helps to protect the small area of sand dunes, which is very important for wildlife. Rushes and scrub dominate the landscape increasingly as you move northwards, and rough ground eventually takes over completely from the golf course. There is a lot of marshy land at the eastern edge, and here there is a water course known as the Pill, it stretches across most of the burrows. Most of the time it is just draining the land, but on the highest tides it becomes filled up completely. Towards Appledore a road has been built up, making a retaining wall to the mudflats. It was originally constructed to serve the landfill site, but is now a great asset to visitors. There is parking along it and at the end. The car park gives very convenient access to grey sands. Grey sands has been greatly modified by use as a landfill site in the recent past, but is now restored to nature. The central fenced area of the old dump is out of bounds, but this enables wildlife to flourish there. Grey Sands has its own special character. 
From Grey Sands there are fine views of the river scenery and across to the huge and famous Braunton Burrows Sandhill system. It is certainly a place worth heading for. We've looked briefly at the shape of the burrows. Now we will focus on some of the forces which do the shaping. Of them all, none can be greater than the relentless sea. Summer and winter, it pounds and sucks the pebble ridge, trying to claim the burrows for its own. Most of the time, the pebble ridge is an effective barrier, separating the burrows from the beach. But at the highest tides, and in stormy weather, the sea throws pebbles and debris onto the land beyond, seeking to flatten the ridge. Where the ridge is weakest, it breaks open gaps and inundates the land beyond. Worst of all, where the ridge has all but disappeared, it directly attacks the unprotected base of the sand dunes themselves. Tens or scores of metres of this valued habitat are lost to the sea each year. And parts of the golf course are also under threat, or have already been lost. The need to repair the destructive work of the waves, or to reinforce defences, is exhausting and unending. The fence around the conservation area needs to be moved steadily inland by the borough's rangers, as each year storms carry away more land on the seaward side. Meanwhile, large earth-moving machinery is needed to repair the ridge where the golf course is most at threat or where the underlying landfill material is at risk of being exposed. Vegetation may colonise the rebuilt ridge during the summer, but each winter the defences are likely to be thrown down again. But although the sea is such a destructive force, it is the very same waves which make the country park such a delight to so many. Summer and winter, the waves offer an attractive playground. For some, the frequent strong winds are an added draw. And apart from the sea itself, the wide, clean, sandy beach is a huge attraction, adding to the allure of this country park. As soon as the sand is uncovered, someone is keen to get onto it. Dogs are banned from the Westwood Ho end during summer but they make the most of it whenever they can get to the beach. All year round, the beach is a wonderful playground for people as well as dogs and is the perfect place to relax and unwind. All summer long, the beach is well protected by lifeguards, both at Westwood Ho and at Sandymere. The spacious sandy beach is an ideal place for those who are learning to surf to develop their skills. It is much used by local surf schools and Skern Lodge Activities Centre. Whether you are in the water or just looking at it, Westwood Ho is a great place to spend a few hours on a summer day. The sea directly challenges the pebble ridge, but the rising tides also influence other areas. 
as it creeps up, reclaiming the shore, it drives the birds from the estuary feeding grounds. Where the very tail of the pebble ridge plunges into the deep river channel at the edge of the mud flats, the incoming tide may bring fish upstream. This is always a popular site for anglers. The lifeboat at its mooring swings round to face into the strong flowing tide. The skern has been a glistening expanse of mud flats for many hours, but now the tide creeps back over it. The feeding birds are pushed further and further up shore, concentrated into a smaller area. In winter, these can form huge mixed flocks. Many will now just sit and wait for the tide to turn. On the highest tides, called the spring tides, twice a month, the river pushes high enough to enter the mouth of the pill. The rising water flows under the Appledore Bridge, sometimes to fill the channel beyond. On the very highest tides, it may inundate some of the adjoining land. Then, footpaths become streams, and damp areas of vegetation become thoroughly soaked. The sheep must find an escape route to drier ground. But without these inundations, the variety of the burrows would suffer. Damp loving plants need it. The building of the Skern Road has long since changed the nature of the land, so that much of it is drier and more scrubby than it used to be. With the rising of the tide, the river comes into its own. There is usually plenty to watch. It is a popular place for recreational sailing, whether racing or more leisurely. Workboats still go about their business as they always did. Lundy's supply ship, the Oldenburg, will often be seen passing, whether on a stores run or loaded with passengers in summer and often the gig oarsmen from Appledore will be seen out practicing. Few fishing boats ply their trade. Several types of craft are operated by the Royal Marines, who use the estuary as a training ground to practice their skills. and some quite large ships still come and go. The river is very rarely boring. Water changes the face of the country park considerably during the cycle of seasons. The accumulation of rain lying on water sodden ground creates seasonal lakes. Of these, Sandymere is the most conspicuous lying just behind the pebble ridge. An overspill car park at some times, at others it is a brackish lake of considerable extent. Another area which changes from pasture land to an inland lake is that just below the landfill mound. 
Whether it is used by sheep and dog walkers or by water birds depends on the season. One of the most obvious human forces to have shaped northern boroughs is surely the golf club. The Royal North Devon Golf Club was founded in 1864 and is the oldest golf course in England. It must surely have one of the very best settings of any golf course. It is regarded as a tough course and is ranked in the top 100 of the world's golf courses. It is plain that many of the undulations in the landscape are where the golf course has tamed the underlying sand dunes. The bunkers and greens add variety to the scenery and the tended fairways also create an attractive contrast to the wild landscapes amongst which they are laid. Winter and summer the course is always popular. Undoubtedly the burrows would be a less attractive place without the variety which the golf course adds to the vista. Golf is the recreation which has had the most obvious visual impact on the country park. But many visitors enjoy other types of recreation there also. Some like just to relax, usually choosing the best viewpoints. But walking, usually with dogs, is undoubtedly the most popular recreation of all. Dogs and people enjoy the spacious sands when the tide is out, but the burrows can be used at all states of the tide. The broad river banks and water sculptured sands of the estuary have their own particular attractiveness. Others enjoy the sight and sound of the multitudes of wild birds. The pressure of people and dogs does have an impact on the park, but thankfully most visitors show respect and consideration towards both grazing animals and wild birds. There are only a few sad exceptions which cause panic and distress. The burrows includes part of the southwest coast path. And at the skern end of the burrows, there is a dedicated area for horse riding. The burrows is quite popular with joggers too. It must surely be a much more uplifting way of exercising than pounding a treadmill indoors. The variety and beauty of the landscape of northern boroughs is further enhanced by the weather and the seasons and by the corresponding changes in the natural world. Not surprisingly, this little country park in our corner of North Devon is listed as a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest. It repays time spent in getting to know it and deserves to be better known and appreciated and to be safeguarded and enhanced for the years to come.